Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1970 WBC Winter Baseball Classic Tournament. Tonight, we've got a game between uh, Tucson and Mississippi. Um, well, let's take a look at the overall bracket. Uh, let's see here. Last series, we played Halifax, Rhode Island. Halifax got eliminated. Rhode Island continues. Mississippi and Tucson are dealing today. In their bracket, New Orleans got the bye. Memphis has advanced. One of these teams, Mississippi or Tucson, will be going home. Let's see where we're at. Game one, and I'll just introduce the team players as we do these boxes. First two games in Tucson, <clears throat> the Arizonians won eight zip in game one. Ron Reed, uh, property of the Colorado Rockies in the Summer League, delivered a two-hit shutout as a number three starter for this Tucson squad. Uh, big sixth inning, they defeated Nolan Ryan. Don't fear, California, you already have Ryan in a future card. You have your 73 Ryan card, excuse me, 72 Ryan card, so you don't have to worry about this 70 card that didn't do very well today. The parade of Mississippi bullpen guys didn't do very well either. But the bats went quiet in Mississippi. Let's kind of go through uh, see what the personality of this team is. Dave Marshall, Ron Hunt, Norm Cash is up for the Tigers. It could be this card. Frank Howard is up for the Rangers. He could be up for this card. Pepitone's uh, already in the league with a future card. Mickey Stanley is uh, hasn't made his Tiger debut yet. J.C. Martin, Ken McMullen, Bud Harrelson's in the league with a future card. Helms, Costco, May on the bench. And for Tucson, really, they look like the, the lesser team here. Norm Miller, Steve Hovley is in the keeper list. Ron Fairley's already with the Expos. Jim Wynn with Houston. Daryl Evans. This is a nameless player card. He had a 69 card. It was pretty bad. 70 he did not. He had lesser at-bats. It's a good reminder about Daryl Evans because 73 is available in the Summer League, and that's the year he gets the 41 home runs for the Braves. So it certainly won't be this Daryl Evans card, and it can't be because it's nameless. Kurt Bleffrey is declining. Ted Simmons has his 71 or 72 card in the league already. Bill Russell's, I think, he's got a future card in the league. Popovich's contract is up. And as a utility infielder, he's a pretty good option, and uh, he'll probably get picked up with this card. Uh, Ron Reed beats Nolan Ryan in game one. So that's what happens in game two in Tucson. Let's go check that one out. Game two. I don't know about Mississippi, but they left their luggage and their baseball bats in Tupelo, and they have not scored. And they lose game two by a score of one to nothing. That one run is a Darrell Evans RBI double in the fourth inning. That was it. The Aces battled. Larry Durker, contract up with Houston. They might slide right into the 70 contract, though, with the Astros. And Osteen, same thing, with the Dodgers. Dodgers might slide right into this card. They both demonstrated they still got it with their 1970 cards. Uh, Osteen cannot believe he got charged for a loss. He was brilliant. But Mississippi has not scored a run. And again, they have a nice kind of Detroit-flavored offense if you look at Norm Cash, Frank Howard, Mickey Stanley in there. And then Joe Pepitone kind of fits the, fits the kind of guys they like there. But, alas, it is not to be. We go to Mississippi. They need to win every game remaining in the series. Two at home and one back in Arizona. I don't know where Mississippi is playing these games. I like to think that they built a baseball stadium and floated it on a barge, like one of those uh, gambling casino things, you know? Could you imagine that? A baseball, a baseball field on a barge in the middle of Mississippi River? That would be pretty cool. Again, folks, we're just having fun with this. And uh, so Tucson today... It's a battle of number two starters. George Stone, 
Pretty nice card for George Stone, pitching over 200 innings for the Braves in 1970. Against Lou Kraus, very curiously, the number two starter for the Mississippi team. Uh, for the 1970 Brewers, he had a 4.75 ERA in over 200 innings. Best thing you could say about him is innings eater, and they need Lou to eat innings and pitch well. Let's get started from Mississippi. Can they get a W, or are they going to go home or gamble all their money on the barge and whatnot? Okay, so Norm Miller leads off for Tucson. 510 catcher's card. I'm not going to be flashing uh, Jerry Mays at 284. Uh, the cards up during the game, as once we get to an elimination, you'll see all 20 cards of the losing team, and I'll kind of go through that. So, Steve Hubbley, 110 pitcher. Normally, in regular gameplay for non exhibition fictional uh, city uh, teams like this, um, I would give more in depth. Uh, looks at the cards and strategy, but again, this is spring training exhibition baseball. Ron Fairley, 412, skies are right. We go to the bottom of one. Mickey Stanley leads off 111, flies right. Ron Hunt, 28, grounds short. Norm Cash, 39, single one of three, lines out. Uh, Norm Cash in 70 at 259 with 15 home runs, and that's getting to the just okay. You want first base is critical to have a ton of production. The good news is, for Norm Cash fans and Tiger fans, he has a big 1971 and gets to play in that all-star game in his own stadium. Uh, so 71 most likely will be the Norm Cash year we select. Here's the toy cannon. 53, rolls the first. Darrell Evans, 35, single one of five, line out. Kurt Bleffrey, 2-9. Pops a second. Frank Howard, 66. Double one to 15. Base hit. A guy hit over 40 homers two years in a row. Andy Costco, 39. That's a 6-4-3 double play. Joe Pepitone, 2-3. Sky's the center field. Mississippi has not scored in 20 straight innings. Ted Simmons walks. Bill Russell, 57 is a K. Popovich, 6'10", third X. Ron Hunt is a 40, 37 at third base, but he gets a ground ball B. Good for him. And with two outs, it's Norm Miller. 1-5 is a walk. Two on, two outs for Hubley. 69 bounces to second. This is Helms, a two at second base makes the play. Okay, Mississippi. Score a run in this series. Jerry May, 48. This guy's the center. Bud Harrelson, same thing. Tommy Helms rolls to the pitcher. You know, Tommy Helms and Bud Harrelson would be nice double play combination there. If they, you know, it's kind of a cool thing to see in some of these games, like seeing which players are kind of pasted together with other players. Most of this is done randomly. Ron Fairley in the fourth, 57's a K. Toy Cannon, 66. Homer, 1 to 7 off Kraus, he missed it. Daryl Evans, 1 8 single. Kurt Bleffrey, 33, pops a second. Door is open for Mississippi to take this thing. Mickey Stanley, 34, rolls with the pitcher. Ron Hunt, 6'11, pitcher X, E21. And, nope, can't get on. And Norm Cash, 36, is a walk. And here's the big guy, Frank Howard, 6'11, pitcher X, again, E21. Same thing, I don't have to check this, but it's now an error. So, two on, two outs. Andy Costco, 35, bouncer to short. We go the fifth. Ted Simmons, 36, rolls a short. Bill Russell, 35, same grounds a short. And Popovich, 35, grounds the third. Wow, you're not seeing a lot of sticks here, are you folks, in the WBC? Makes sense. All the big bats of 1970, you'd hope, are already in the carryover league. Your Johnny Benches, your Boob Pals, your, um, I'm trying to think here. Maybe Regis, nah, Regis, I can't, can't think offhand. But you get the idea, folks. Uh, Carl Yastrzemski, that was the guy I was going for. 
Uh, Joe Pepitone, 1 8, rolls a second. Jerry May, 46, left. And Bud Harrelson, 42, rolls to first base. We have a single walk and an error through five frames. 23 scoreless innings for Mississippi. <laughs> The remarkable pitching of Larry Durker, Ron Reed, and George Stone. Yeah. Top of six. Here's Norm Miller, 37, with the weather. Grounds a second. Steve Hovley, 53, rolls to first. And Ron Fairley, 68, a walk. Jim Wynn, the toy cannon, 65. Prowse has the seven card, the meaning that he would have the seventh best ERA on his team. That's where the homer starts at, on the roll of 6-5. And we'll probably see his card at the end of this video because I think they're going to lose. 6-5 is the two-run homer off the Kraus card. And it is 2-0 Tucson. Daryl Evans, 46, base hit. And Kraus is just broken. Well, kind of looks like the guy simply ran out of gas. Um, you can pitch to Kurt Bluffrey if he likes. I'll let him go. Let him pitch one more batter. Kurt Bluffrey, 111 off the Bluffrey card. It's, of course, a two run homer for Kurt Bluffrey off the card. Okay, well, yeah, that, that didn't work. Oh boy, Mississippi. Not a pretty picture. Five and two thirds for Lou Krause. Well, we got a very popular bullpen. All these names are nice. You got Paranowski, Sparky Lyle, Ron Taylor, Nelson Bryles. It's a popular. Popular pitchers there. Sparky Lyle moved in the offseason out of Boston to the Yankees. The Yankees have him on their keeper list, but they're going to wait until either 72 or 73 as his whip and ERA will go down when he's pitching in Yankee Stadium. So here he is in the sixth to face Ted Simmons. In a 4 nothing game. 5-10. Bouncer to short. This is Harrelson at 2 23 At short, makes the play. By the way, but Harrelson's card is currently with the Mets in, a, in I believe, 72. Whatever year that Bud Harrelson's like a 1-E-14 at short. Which is just devastating when you're going up against the Mets. And they have all those stud pitchers. That was part of the reason they won the World Series last year is Bud Harrelson just gobbled everything up. So, we go to the bottom of the sixth. Twelve outs away from being swept. Can Mississippi get something started to extend this so we can get to see more players in the tournament? Tommy Helms will lead it off. 2-7 pops a second. Mickey Stanley, 56, strikes out. Ron Hunt, 211, bounces to short. Now, folks, this is one of the more remarkable pitching performances by a team in any uh, competitive uh, baseball tournament or season. This is now getting to be three consecutive shutouts, which is pretty remarkable for Stratomatic. Things that are difficult in Stratomatic are no hitters, of course, and multiple shutouts. <laughs> Any shutout is tough, but to do do it three three straight times, and again you got Frank Howard's 44 homers here, Pepitone, Costco, Cash. You got some bangers in this lineup, Mickey Stanley. So four zip in the seventh. Here is Bill Russell. One eight is a single. B Steeler Popovich was hit, hitting and running here. Rolled a nine, so that's a fielder's choice. Popovich on first for Norm Miller. Batting for him will be Mike Hirschberger. Again, if you don't recognize some guys, it's because they have not been in the Carrier League yet, and they've been ignored in the previous three drafts just because they're pretty ordinary. But Hirschberger is trying to do something special so that I could consider him uh, to get a roster spot in the draft. 1-9, single one to 16, but he rolled a 19 and lined out. Hershberger would be a corner outfielder against lefties, which has some value. And with two outs, it's Steve Hovley. He's going to stick around and in the outfield. 2-5, grounds to third. 
They're going to bring some defense in. They're going to bring in Tommy Dean to play short and Sid O'Brien to play third to help Mr. George Stone get that shutout. So they improve the defense with nine outs to go here. All right, here's Norm Cash, down four in the seventh. Stretch time here in Mississippi, by the way. We have been enjoying John Lee Hooker. Wonderful compilation here. Two hours of the classic gold John Lee Hooker. We could go for some Tupelo here, or Dimples, or all sorts. We can go for anything off of this. Give me this one, though. Always like this one. All right, bottom of seventh. Norm Cash leads off. 42, center. Frank Howard, 66, double one to 15, doubles. Costco, bounces short. 321, single. Four to one, Pepitone. Ball four. And that breaks stone, just like that. Mississippi gets their first run. Apparently, the John Lee Hooker is finally resonating here. Humphreys will come out of Tucson's bullpen in the seventh. First and second. Jerry May. Batting for Jerry May, J.C. Martin. Or 12, center C. Bud Harrelson. People of Tubal. Rounds the third. Begin to get word. All right. The low hand buzzer. The great John Lee Hooker. Okay. Top of the eighth inning. It is four to one. Uh, we're going to go Paranowski for two innings. He's the best pitcher they have. His contract is up for the Twins. Uh, just a great relief pitcher from this era. Uh, he has a few more good years left. He's going to try and keep this a three-run game into the eighth inning. Ron Fairley. 111. Short. Jim Wynn, 2-4. Center. Tommy Dean, 67, is a base hit. Dean's trying to be a defensive replacement at short. Good luck with that. And Sid O'Brien, 38, is a single. Two on two outs. Big at bat here for Simmons and Paranowski. Ted Simmons, 111, grounds the third. All right, we go to the eighth inning with a three run lead. It'll be Tommy Helms leading off. 6 10 off Humphreys. Second X. This is Popovich, and he's a good one. 2E8 for a utility player. That's outstanding. Makes the play. Mickey Stanley. 67 is a K. And with two outs, Ron Hunt. 2 8 grounds to short. Nice performance for Humphreys getting out of that jam. He'll leave after an inning and two thirds. We go to the ninth. It's Bill Russell. 1 8 is a single. Popovich hits and runs. Seven runner has to steal. Russell is safe. Now Popovich. C Bunter? Mm, no, I don't think so. He'll hit away. 37. Triple 1 11 off his card. That is a triple off Paranowski, and suddenly it's 5 1. The infield comes up for Mike Hirschberger. 1 6 is a double off the Hirschberger card. Folks, Tucson, they're a player. In this year's tournament. Doing well out of the desert. Steve Hubley. 6'10, short X. This is Harrelson. Makes the play. Runner holds a second. For Ron Fairley. 2 8 to K. And a toy cannon. 36 is a walk. Two on, two outs for Tommy Dean. Fouls to the catcher. 6 1 game. In the bottom of the ninth, 
George Brunette will try and finish this thing off with Hoyt Wilhelm available. Brunette's card is nameless. He did not pitch enough innings in 70. Actually, he pitched 134 and two-thirds innings, but Strat didn't print his card. But because he's left-handed, I added him. Bottom of the ninth, 6-1 game, Cash Howard Costco. Here we go. Mississippi about to be swept. Norm Cash strikes out. Frank Howard, oh, what a quiet tournament for him. Bounces to second base. Pope Vich the 2 8 And with two outs, Andy Costco, again, bounces to second base, but they get the single off Pope Vich. And with two outs, Pepitone. 2-5, grounds to short. That was pretty easy. Mississippi goes down. 6-1. 8 nothing, 1 nothing, and 6 to 1. Outscored 17 to 1 in 3 games. Pretty disappointing. Ron Paranowski. He wasn't very good in relief either, was he? Put five runners on. And two runs. A walk and a K. Sparky Lyle. You up a hit. Lou Krause takes a loss with that sixth inning where he gave up those four runs. Uh, we'll look at his card, but you'll see. I'm not seeing a future for him. Brunette gave up a hit and a K in the ninth. He gets, he gets a cheap save out of that. Humphrey's inning in two thirds. Did a nice job. Struck out a batter. George Stone gets the win, ran out of gas in the seventh inning. Otherwise, three hits and a single run, two walks, and a strikeout. 1019, 1019, 6104, 4323. Game three in the books. We'll go through the stats, look at the tournament, and then we'll take a look at Mississippi's cards as they have been eliminated. Both teams were two and four after the first uh, best of seven. And they went three up and three down. So Mississippi finishes two and seven. They get 216. Three near shutouts will do that. 486 ERA. Not much to say at all about the offense. Lou Krause lost three games in of the nine games they played because he pitched on three days rest. And he couldn't really get out of the sixth inning in any of those. That's not good. Tucson, after starting two and four, gets three straight wins. They're now five and four. They advance in the tournament. Doing pretty well. 376 ERA. They didn't do very well pitching in the first round, but the pitching in that second round was magnificent. Drop their ERA down into the threes. Hitting 230 though. Let's take a quick look at the number of games played as far as the batting average and ERA. So you're, if you're familiar with the carryover league, uh, uh, normally we get like to a, like a 265 to 270 batting average and ERA around 405 to 425. Uh, statistically right now through 68 games, it's been a little more pitching than hitting as expected because the hitting is pretty bad. We can plug in the tournament result here, give Tucson a 3-0, which means Mississippi is eliminated with a record of 2-7. Memphis was 4-2, and, and then they finished 4-5. And, and then 5-4 and four is Tucson. And then I do a reconciliation of net wins and losses here. So minus five for Mississippi, minus one for Memphis, plus one, and plus five. And there you go. So the teams who don't have buys to this point are Rhode Island, Vancouver Island, Memphis, Tucson, Savannah, and Hollywood. Uh, they can't be seated yet until this round is over. I still have to do the West and the Sun Belt loser bracket games, and then I can do a seeding of teams 5 through 12. 
As far as the pitching rotations go, this is the bracket for this pitching staff. For Mississippi, they are off. They're, they don't pitch anymore. And for Tucson, those great three starters will continue. We'll go, uh, we'll go Durker and probably Reed and then George Stone in their next round matchup. All right. Well, that's it today from the WBC. Uh, we'll look at Mississippi's um, roster before we close this out tonight. Thanks for checking it all out. We'll see you next time. All right, welcome back, baseball fans. We are going to take a look at Mississippi's uh, uh, team and look at their cards, the 20 players. Uh, we'll begin with J.C. Martin. He has a future card in the league, uh, so this one will not be selected. And Normally, lefties with minus one arms with power would be selected, even with this on base percentage, but it's just not enough. You don't even want to roll 1.5 or 110. Just not enough. It's painfully short there. Uh, Jerry May could be a catcher against lefties here. Uh, zero arm catcher is nice. But Harrelson we don't have to consider. He's already in the league and with a future card as a one at short. We mentioned that. This one would have been a nice card. He hits over 250. No, he doesn't hit. <laughs> I thought he hit 250. He does not. 243. Oh, well. All right. Tommy Helms is in the league with a future card. And this is not... Now, this guy would have been in the World Series for the Reds, um, but his 71 card, he's a one at second base, and he hits better. So that's the card the Reds are going to hold on to until they eventually uh, make the trade for Morgan. So this Helms won't get into the league. All right, McMullen had a similar card last year that, that's up. Um... Good defensively at third with range. This is a nice card for a corner out, for corner infield who can field. He had 540 plate appearances. 229 average. The walks do help it out a little bit, though. Maybe you would not want him to be your full-time third baseman, but you could work him into a nice platoon. Dave Marshall. Again, corner outfield, you really are looking for a lot of punch. I don't see a lot of punch here. I see just average average defense. He's a C stealer, which is okay. A 14 runner with power. Decent amount of power here, but he doesn't get above 250. 243. It's not a bad card. I just don't think it'll get in the carrier league really, because you really want to get a lot of punch at corner outfield. All right, Mickey Stanley's card. I think it's time for this card to get into the league. I just love that center field. One minus two, E0. Now that's going to be, as far as I know, the best in the carryover league. We have a, a one E0, Ken Berry, but he's got a zero arm. So now we've got a one E0 with a minus two arm. Oh, yeah. Now, the Tigers, though... I think they have one of the future cards of Stanley in the league, so they might have to... They could revert back to this, or they could just keep the Stanley card they have in a future year. The one they have in a future year crushes lefties and is weak against righties, which is why they selected it. Ron Hunts, uh, he's got a lot of hit-by-pitches here. He has more with his future card that's in the league. All right, Norm Cash, here we go. This card is up, and it could be selected. And actually, this is a this is a good card as far as you look at that on base here with the power and the defense, and he's not really susceptible to lefties, really. But I think he's better in 71. He had over 30 homers, I believe. So I would go with 71 Norm Cash. All right, here he is, Frank Howard. This card's getting into the league. It looks pretty much like the 69 card. What I don't like about this card is this. Single one at two, line out to short. Might as well just be a strikeout. I'm never gonna hit that. That's the way I look at those kind of dice rolls. I'm never gonna hit it. And he missed, he had two guys on base, rolled a 1-7 and rolled a 13 in the game I just played, which was a little disappointing. 
again, he's in the league. He's going to probably be the first round pick of the Texas Rangers, and they'll probably run this run this player through his rest of his career instead of dealing him, because it's the Rangers are very uh, poor talent wise. What a great couple of years for Frank Howard. 80, 90 some home runs. Amazing. All right, Costco has a really nice 73 and I believe 74 card. This one is only okay. The homers are nice here, but then no average and over here. Doesn't have, doesn't have power versus righties, which almost looks like an oversight. The idea of Andy Costco not having power doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but. This other, this is another stat that would just drive you bananas. The one walk and 40 strikeouts. Particularly for a pinch hitter, which he was in the National League for a bit, nice chunk of his career. The, the fact that he can't even draw a walk to get on base is a little disturbing. All or nothing. All right, Joe Pepitone's... Uh, got a card in the league where he's a one at first base and he hits 300 so this card is a very nice card this is more of your power hitting card 26 homers but only a 258 batting average so we have the uh the app batting average version in the in the league all right let's look at some pitching osteen's card is up what's really cool is that he's getting very long in the tooth here He's late in his career, but he can still pitch on three days rest. Statistically, he's just only okay here. 24 home runs allowed, 382 ERA. More hits than innings pitched. Believe it or not, he has a future year that's better than this. So that might be the year they take. And here's Lou Krause, the, the gentleman who just started that game. That's the 6-5 that decided the game ultimately. He's not that bad against righties. Starter six. I mean, it's just the innings pitched. 216 innings, but the homers allowed is not good. More hits innings pitched. The high ERA, losing record. I just, unfortunately, guys that pitch on three days rest often get into the league. But unfortunately, I just don't think Lou Kraus can be justified unless you're one of the weaker teams in the league and you need an innings eater. Just a guy who can pitch on three days rest, and that's it. All right, here's another early Nolan Ryan card. This would be with the Mets still. And again, nothing to worry about here. His uh, 72 card is in the league with the Angels on the Angels. So this is just, just filling a roster spot in the WBC tournament and getting some name recognition. Earl Wilson, I believe he was put on waivers. He was. Earl Wilson was put on waivers, so he's free to sign with anybody. He had a nice year in 69. But in 70, the numbers just aren't that good. Uh, 1-6, 485, and 65 innings. As If he just made him a reliever, he still wouldn't be that good because he doesn't have a ownership either side here. I just I think he might be done. Don't see this happening for Earl Wilson. Nellie Bryles had a bad year here and has a... Once he gets to Pittsburgh, he's with the Cardinals here. Once he gets to the Pirates, he starts to have some nice years. This is not going to cut it right here. I can tell you right that. This is just not going to be in the carryover league. Here, Sparky Lyle is still with Boston. And he's okay. With a 390 year in 67 innings. But once he gets into the Yankee pinstripes, he really turns it on. And so that's uh, a card that Yankees will take, a future card. Ron Taylor, his 69 card closed out games for the Miracle Mets. Did so in the tournament. However, I mean, did so in the, I said tournament, did so in the summer league a year ago. Uh, or at least he uh, was in the bullpen, didn't have to close out games, they had Tug McGraw. He's still with the Mets in 70. He's free to sign with anybody. He's okay. Um, relief two. Again, he's just a right-handed pitcher. It's not a big deal. He might make a roster, he might not. Uh, he, he'd be like the, the eighth pitcher selected on any team because he pitches right-handed. 
teams are always wanting to get the three lefties first because they're so hard to come by. Then they get the last five righties. Speaking of lefties, Paranowski. This is a very nice card. Not one of his best cards. It's still very nice. It's got a 243 ERA and over 100 innings. You, lo you like just the singles against the lefty, even though he has a walk on seven. Not crazy about that. Homer 111 is not so bad. A relief three is also good. Even the E rating is not so bad. So, this dude's definitely still a closer material. Um, it's wait and see what the twins do. They also have Reichert available as a lefty as well. So, you have Reichert, Paranowski in the bullpen. They have to make the right choices. Plus, they have Harmon Killebrew up. So, they have to be careful. Remember, in the 1970 Twins, they, they turn into a pumpkin after that. 69 and 70 Twins win the division. And then after that, the A's take over. And back to J.C. Martin. So that's it. That's a look at the 20 players assigned to the Mississippi stack. You, you pretty much saw kind of a disappointing review. And, well, they were the second team to be eliminated. Um, as far as you know, other teams fared better in the WBC draft than Mississippi. All right, thanks for checking that out. We'll see you next time.